a.m. on Thursday nights, 8 p.m. to midnight. And you are watching Pool Get a TV. Get your fucking pool. Welcome, everybody, to a new edition of Hogan TV, where we have a variety show blowing up local artists, comedians, musicians, mimes, I mean... Movie makers. All that stuff. The man, so. All artists. Welcome. But tonight, we have the one and only Stuart Taylor in the house. <laughs> Woo! Some of you guys might there. recognize some of his... Iconic photography from publishing metal magazines for 30 years now, as well as the Pantera 3 home video you might recognize him from, or his ass anyway, where he's having the, <laughs> the white blood cells squeezed out of it, right? Bitch, get back. That's it right there. But he now. is also reviving his band Scum Scunge that has been around, it's been what, 10 years now since the first yeah. album? Way, I mean, it's like the first album came out in 2003. Oh, wow, see? So, Anything after the 2000s, the 90s is always like 10 years ago to me. I mean, if I kick it around for a couple more years, I can have a 20-year anniversary. So, 
Well, right. I've been. You gotta have <laughs> a 20th time, anniversary time show. Flies. Time flies. Time flies. And you got Shawnee here from uh, Scum Sconge. So, uh, are you really 11 years old? Yes. Cool. Well, That's we're awesome. Man. He plays some mean drums for 11 years Sean old. Sean Hannity. Yeah. Shawnee. Yeah. Sean Hannity. Hannon. Oh. Hannon. No, I'm not that famous. Yet. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Shawnee's doing it early, man. He's starting it out exactly right, dude. That's awesome. I know. Man. I wish. Mad props. Being 40 years old, I can drum half that good right as this 11 year old cat right here so and you guys will see uh some footage from his work and their work from their last show what was it a couple weeks ago uh yeah, about three weeks you now. guys played the rail club for warren fest and uh, that was the first time you guys had played live in about a decade right yeah i quit in 2008 but we actually had played a skating rink i don't know a few weeks earlier just to just yeah. I didn't tell nobody because I didn't want nobody to see us. <laughs> right. I didn't really tell that many people to come to the rail club either because I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> you but got, it, but got was, people out there couple skating to some skunk yeah. skating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Been around so long, kids. Uh, people have grandkids now. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the original fans bring yeah, the next yeah, generation no, yeah. of scum skaters yeah. to town. Yeah. Oh, shit. So, yeah, we got plenty of videos to show you guys from that show. Uh, no one, Stuart hasn't seen him yet. These guys haven't seen him yet. They've just seen the, what, basically cell phone footage and stuff. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. That's been yeah, posted had, over the yeah. past couple of weeks. So. Yeah, we, just what other people have done in the crowd, yeah. Yeah. And you uh, you said you wanted to see the fuck-ups. Oh, yeah. So, well, yeah. <laughs> I thought you guys did a really good job. I didn't. If you did fuck up, you pulled it off, which is really all that matters. Yeah, there so. were no train wrecks, so That's That's the main thing right there. So you didn't have to stop the band to tune your guitar yeah. halfway through a song? Well, no, you, you just know? have to start and <laughs> stop and start over again, you know, or just let the song implode. Hell Thank yeah. God I've never had that happen. <laughs> yeah, knock on wood, man. Right. So uh, we want to thank you guys for making October such a badass month for us uh, here. It's awesome. Uh, the Halloween Horror Nights and all that stuff, uh, the Ghost Babes and Todd Jenkins and Billy Blair showing up promoting the Cherokee Creek. And Glenn Coburn last week with the blood 35th anniversary of Bloodsuckers from Outer Space. Manifestive. Manifestive, Manifest. kicking it off and playing live. So that was a good time. We, uh, uh, Aaron, if you noticed, uh, his <laughs> first time in a month he's been without a costume on. So um, we're going to, uh, he built all of his costumes and customized them and everything. So uh, he made some videos behind the scenes to show you guys and... Uh, just to recap October, we'll get to Aaron those. You got anything you want to say about them first? Oh, no, man. It was, just, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with it. So don't expect some badass videos or some badass costumes. It wasn't like that. I was just having a blast and trying to uh, fit the costumes, tailor them to each one of our guests. So yeah, that was it. It was just a blast. Right on, Pam. You want to roll that? And we'll be right back with Scum Sconge. Fuck yes. What, what? No, 
Power them tape. <laughs> am I being am I being video? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, I was working with this uh this mask trying to make it into this uh Bigfoot who show <laughs> Anyway, I cut off the uh jaw and I got this old this piece of shit mask that I ordered from Amazon that just was trash, so I'm gonna wind up cutting the hair off of that painting my face and gluing some hair to it. I'll change the hair, the hair color. What I really am bugging, <laughs> what I'm bugging about is this lip. If I smile, you can't see my teeth. So I look like a, like a 90 year old man. <laughs> so that's what I was giggling about when this thing started. What's even better is if I look up a little bit. All about you, Rhonda. Is it? I should have been a supermodel. I'm looking swell. I'm a Bigfoot. I'm a Bigfoot. So, like I said, I had to change the color of the hair and the mask. Uh, <laughs> Definitely looks different now. Um, I'll have to paint all this and make this look different and so forth. I, uh, I'll probably be uh, making this stick here. I got my uh, my trusty uh, nasty fucking spirit gun. So I'll probably make this a little bit more sunken in here. We're going to use this bad boy. Cut off some hair. We're going to cover this with some nasty ass hair. I got my feet. I worked on today using my feet. Uh, I didn't. I, it's not like I made these. I bought these, but I certainly have turned them disgusting. So there's all of that. Uh, so coming together nicely. Pretty sure I will be a, a big foot yet to come. <laughs> So this week we're gonna do sort of a demon thing. I've had to cut this mask away from my face. Obviously, I'll repaint my face. I was just trying to get an idea of where I'm going with it. Uh, I'm gonna get this all glued down. This looks like it would just stick to me, but it doesn't just stick to me. So I have to get it all fucking glued, which is a pain in the ass. I had to stuff all the horns and all the ears both the ears uh, to get that to work I don't know it's just a little bit different than I thought it was gonna be but we're gonna make it happen yet and I'm gonna be a little gargoyle uh, by the time this is fucking over hopefully anyway we'll see you guys on PGA okay so we are on the very last Halloween show for the new season season two of Pole Getter TV and today we have Glenn Coburn, who is the director and writer and actor in Bloodsuckers from Outer Space, which is about some Texas rednecks that turn into bloodsuckers. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to stick to the uh, authenticity of the movie with the way I'm doing things. Uh, so... Yeah, this looks a little silly right now. It's in its early forms, but it was a 1984 film, and uh, that's kind of how special effects were back then, so I'm trying to stick to the way it should be. Anyway, I really appreciate it all. Y'all following me along on all these little outfits. Uh, it's, it's been cool. It's been fun to make. 
Uh, hopefully you'll join us next Halloween for all the same kind of fun. But we got all year. So uh, until then, man, get your pole. Job, Aaron. Maybe uh, next year I'll fucking join you or something instead of. <laughs> That's tedious stuff, there, man. Nah, fucking... It was fun, man. It was fun. Nothing too elaborate, but it was definitely fun. Right on. What'd you guys do for Halloween? We went and talked to uh... Uh, someone that we cannot say right now. Oh, oh. talk to a horse about a man, huh? Hmm. Like Someone's <laughs> gonna happen pretty soon. <laughs> oh, it pertains to the band. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, whatever, you know. I mean, Johnny had said he was going to leave the band at the end of November, so... That's right. I put some feelers out with some people and just talking to a few people. Cool, man. So tonight we're here with Stuart Taylor and Shawnee from Scum Scones. And as you just heard, uh, their singer, has, is he moving? So he's going to move back to Indiana. He said his yeah. End of parents, November, right? End of November. Okay. He said to book as many shows as I could. So. Well, that's yeah. cool, man. And if you guys uh, know any singers, maybe you guys are going to be auditioning soon. Or are I, you going to you gonna weed out, like ask the people that you already know first if they're interested in them. I don't wanna, that I, you know what? Out. I don't know who watches this. So I don't, you know. Everybody I, does. I'll, I'll, come I'll tell you. Everybody show. does. <laughs> that's pretty cool. It's pretty magical. So Right on. So, and you guys have another show coming up in the 13th? The 15th. 15th. At the Maverick. Sports Downtown Arlington. Richard Chavez. So. Yeah, did you shout out who you wanted to shout out? Is that who that was during the... Oh, no, that's just the owner. He probably don't watch this stuff. He's a great Oh, well, who are you wanting to shout out during the... Everybody uh... watches this stuff. Oh, yeah. hey, Zeus. <laughs> yeah, hey, Zeus. There you go. Right. What's up, brother? Oh, uh, Bastilos or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I know I know Jesus. He's a good dude. What's up, bro? And all you guys out there... Don yo, Foster, yo, yo. Dave Foster, yo, yo, yo. Danny Bliss, yo, yo. one of the Ghost Babes, Scott Hall, Cleaver, Faith, and John, and that's where my list oh, ends, Cleaver, but thank Kyle, all you guys for tuning in go. right now. Boom. John Trammell from Demon Seed, fucking pretty badass shit, hope to have them guys in here soon, they're supposed to be doing an acoustic show. That'd what do you got me on the way, in case I say something funny? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's so, cool. uh... Well, badass! I know you guys have been waiting to see some footage from the show. You want me? Oh yeah, get yeah, started yeah. with yeah. this. Yeah, fuck yeah! So, uh, and we got Out quite a few of them. So, yes. got to keep the ball rolling. I want them to get them all aired tonight. So, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ready whenever you are, Pam. Let's do this. Scum scones, everybody. Two weeks ago, it's around.
All right. Welcome back with Stuart Taylor and Shawnee of Scum Sconge. Boom. You just saw the, what is the name? I, I called it the brain in my file. That's uh, migraine. Migraine. My migraine. Brain, my balls, my words. <laughs> right on. So uh, Scum Sconge is your little baby. You know, you've had it forever. You even Even use your, your old dog on both album covers. I know you miss that dog. He's buried out on your farm and everything. Yes, you sir. love that dog. So yeah, old Willie. I'm a dog person too. So, uh, but. You're making this dog famous, man. Put you know what? But, you know, I, you know, I, I didn't really care. Christian did that, so. Oh yeah. So I, I mean, that's cool that he's on there and made him into an alien or whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, and you started this. Uh, what year did you start? And what got you uh, wanting to even? Well, I guess you always wanted to be in a band. Were you any? No, bands not really. That? No, man. I mean, I think you go way back in the old days. I remember I made a motherfucker steal my first guitar. I was in Germany. <laughs> Richard Stender. How'd you what make I, him steal you a I guitar? I seen the guitar sitting in that door open, like at the FIS International School. Uh huh. I said, go in there and get that motherfucker. And fucking, he brought it outside, fucking ran off in the woods. It was a black Ibanez copy of a Les Paul. So I really? couldn't get it. I had to sneak it in my house because, you know, we didn't have no money. Because when my parents found it, they said, you better get that motherfucker out of here. But that's when you're fucking going, ding, ding. Ding, ding. Yeah, ding, real ding, quiet. Ding. trying to play Cat Scratch Fever. No, you're trying to figure out how to fucking make your fingers work. So uh -huh. you can play Cat Scratch Fever by Ted Nugent. You know? <laughs> but then I had to get rid of the motherfucker or whatever. It was years later or whatever. I used to play with Gamma Side at the Gamma Shack. Okay. That's where I wrote my first song over there, living with them dudes. You know, they let me play around on their shit. But in reality, what Scum Scunge would be really was when Daryl gave me that guitar in 2001. And when I went home and started that guitar is like it could play itself and so oh wow and, and that's where it happened pass the magic on to you it, it just happened really fast I mean it was so quick you know all of a sudden there was a drummer and a singer and it was like holy shit I better write some motherfucking songs so <laughs> right. it was a gift from God because yeah. I, I, I couldn't tell you where any of them fucking songs come from so. wow so I have no idea what do you do with that guitar now it's not the one you play on stage is it no nah, it's a it's a little like Korean min miniature fucking it was a Washburn guitar back then. Oh yeah, it's at my shop, I and mean, I play it. You know, oh, right I still on. play it, but I don't. I don't really like that style to play live. I like regular shaped guitars, but I they're agree. the most badass guitars to play. Fucking sitting down when you're writing music because they sit, you know, by themselves. You know, regular yeah. guitars, you're fucking having to support it. But if you play a Daryl Dean guitar or whatever, it'll hold itself. So yeah, I, I, I probably write a lot of the music yeah, on the ones that I have at home and at the farm and. That one that he gave me, yeah. At the so after the first album, were you just like chomping at the bit to get back in it? Or were you like, I'll take a hiatus for now because I can't find anybody? No. We, we, when we, that's the second record. We made that first record. I mean, by the time, you know, Daryl gave me that guitar and then, you know, going through all kinds of motherfuckers, right? You know, and people and whatever. And, you know, there were singers and drummers and fucking bass players every badass guitar player and fucking dfw played bass and scum scunge at one point you know oh, no shit. chad hammonds uh eric knutson, eric knutson, did knutson he ever... <laughs> fucking uh adam i can't have to think of his fucking last name he was a badass i don't i mean i might as draw a blank i'm kind of tired tonight but if i drink enough it'll Hopefully it'll refresh the memory. To me, so. It kick started no, off. No, so we played around. You know, we started playing, and I mean, it was like when Daryl, you know, because Daryl played on that first record. That was a big fucking deal for me. You know, yeah. so when we put out that record in 2003, Daryl had played on it, and it seemed to me it didn't take a few months. You know, my whole band was on some kind of shit. Mm -hmm. You know, so the band like disintegrated like really quick, and then. Took, I, I remember because we had t-shirts that said Resurrection 2005 
So it probably took about a year. You know, my singer got cleaned up, and then we fucking started playing again, and then we kind of kicked ass hmm. from, you know, there. All yeah, the how long did that span? So 2008. 2008. Oh, three years? That's when I said, fuck this shit, I was done, because I couldn't. Yeah. I met some of the people I was playing with, I don't know. I wasn't <laughs> real happy. Y'all were yeah. everywhere, though. I mean, I remember being in a band called Mahuke back in that time, and... Everywhere we went, y'all had just played. There was just stickers Dude, everywhere. And then we fucking played. Everywhere. It was ridiculous because I didn't know that I could even play fucking the guitar. And so it was such a magical deal that you could even write fucking songs. So I played every fucking weekend. If it was Club Optimo or those titty bar thing clubs on the <laughs> side of, on Abram Street or fucking, you know, we played Division One forever. Right and like like the guy that owned it he goes I'm just gonna change the name of the club to division uh, to Scum Sconge you know because you motherfuckers <laughs> you are here all the off. fucking time man. yeah house band we were the fucking house band dude but then I realized you know you burn motherfuckers out doing that shit and so it took me a little while and I said look you know it's kind of what I want to do now is just play like every five or six weeks play with some of your buddies you know and have a good time play on some good shows and go fucking blow it up. That's all I want to do. I'm mm, you know, fucking right. And that's something. You know, make another record and make some more music or whatever. You know, I'm, right always, I'm always writing songs and stuff. And like you said, uh, a lot of people that don't might not know, uh, Dimebag Daryl played on his first album. And you can find some of the tracks on YouTube also. Yeah, that's where most so people... How did that come about? Like, did he volunteer to play? Or were you like, hey, no, man. No, she, no. She, you know, she <laughs> you had to beg. Like, 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 there it is, see? <laughs> my finger was chopped off in a car crash when I was 18, so... Tommy, Tony Iommi style. No, huh? bullshit. No, they, they just took the tips of his off. When, oh. they, when they take the whole motherfucker off, you're pretty much fucked, so... <laughs> so hey, that was the price to have him pay on your record? You just stick a finger out. <laughs> No, yeah, no, it was no. a drug deal gone bad. Now, oh. no, it was a car. <laughs> no. I was like, that's the most uh, I, I awesome thought story I've ever heard. You know, drug deal gone bad. I lost my finger. No, it was a car wreck or whatever. But no, you know, so I don't really play any leads if you listen to Scum Scunch music. So, you know, hey, maybe it's a crutch or whatever. But I can tell you, like Jim Wright from Avalon, uh -huh. his fucking hand is all mangled up, and that motherfucker still plays leads. So maybe I'm lazy or something. <laughs> but I think he still has that finger, though. But if you chopped off a motherfucker's finger like that, it would fuck their career up. But, yeah, it's tough, you know, man. But, I mean, at least I, you know, I wasn't really wasn't playing when it happened, you know. So what it was, so I thought, well, fuck it. You know, we're making that record. And I asked Daryl, I said, hey, will you play the guitar on our record for him? And he goes... Ah, uh, Stuart, you know, I gotta fucking come fucking see you first, you know? And I thought, you know, you think about it, it's understandable, right? You yeah. know? Because if he said, yeah, fuck, I'll do it, he don't know what the fuck he's getting into. Exactly. And so, we'd be playing shows here and there and there, and I'd fucking call his bitch ass, and, you know, he's on tour, and he's doing all these things, and he's a busy guy, you know, Daryl was a busy guy. And uh, one night he did, he finally came out to the tattoo bar, you know, in the Lancaster, and he came out there, and it's kind of crazy, you know, because people, they get all around him and stuff, but it was a magical night for me, you know, personally, you know, and so he did, he came up there, and, you know, he had some people around him, you know, and he watched that whole fucking show, and so at the end of the fucking show, he said, Stuart, he goes, man, you weren't lying, he goes, man, he goes, you got you a good fucking band, he said, he goes, you got you a good drummer, he said, you got you a good front man, and uh, he didn't say anything about the bass player. Uh, <laughs> but he said, Stuart, man, it's you. I don't know who I'm looking at. He said, Stuart, it's you. He said, man, you shine like a motherfucker up on that stage. He said, you look like you've been playing the guitar your whole life. Fuck yeah, I'll play on your CD. Wow. I said, dude. Yeah. I told my band, I said, motherfuckers, psh. I started cracking the whip because we'd already we were already making our <laughs> right. meth, we were already making our meth recordings already in that trailer house. I said, "Man, get these fucking three songs." There was three songs that I wanted Daryl to do, you know, and so uh, so I took him the first meth mix over there, and and so in the meantime they're doing more meth mixing at the trailer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to be honest, you know, hey. whatever. And so so in the meantime they did another meth recording. So I took that back to Daryl, and then, uh, am I going on too long? Or I no, 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 man, talk. Here. Okay, so fucking, so then I took another CD over there, Daryl, so look, here's a better, you know, methamphetamine mix, and uh, <laughs> so he fucking, he had it, 
And, you know, because, you know, like I said, he's a busy guy, right? Right. And he fucking called me. and said, hey, Stuart, come on over, man. Come on over, right? So I remember, we, you know, you go in the house. We went fucking back in the fucking studio in the back. And, you know, whatever. It was, it was badass, dude. So he fucking put that fucking CD in. And I, I, I was crying pretty much the whole fucking time, you know. Because I knew the minute that that man would give me that fucking CD. And I still have it, man, with all the bullshit on it, you know. Whatever, you know, we had our own shit going on. And uh, and I, I thought, as soon as that motherfucker gives me that CD, whether it ever comes out or not, right? That at one point I made rock history. That yeah. fucking Daryl Abbott from Pantera played lead guitar on my bullshit music, right? Yeah. And so, the first song he did was called "Believe," which I don't know. There used to be more songs on it that floats in and out, or maybe you have to search on YouTube to find that bullshit or whatever. And then, like the second song he did was that song called "How Many Times," which is like a slower heavy song and I remember it tripped me out because you know I wasn't used to that but he started playing this he played a harmony part inside of that song and if you as soon as you fucking hear the motherfucker you're going it's the great southern trend kill the tone is the yeah. great southern trend kill it was so badass and then the last song he really loved that song was called Abuse he knows Shawnee knows that song we play that song me and him do right on and uh it's a badass song. There's live videos on YouTube at the Ridgely Theater and all that stuff. But, and, and like I said, I was fucking. <laughs> right. I was crying the whole fucking time. I, I mean, can't say it. I wouldn't I mean, be doing the same it, thing. It's fucking, it's fucking big time. I'm telling you, man. You know, I mean, I knew Daryl, you know, a good part of my life. You know, we were friends and stuff. But for him to, you know, do that, you know, it was, it was magic, you know? Yeah. And so he told me when he got that fucking CD out and he goes, Stuart. He goes, man, he goes, you've had a fucking rough life. You know, because Daryl knows me, and he knows what happened to me and everything. And he goes, man, you deserve a fucking break. And he gave me that fucking CD, dude. Fucking And idea. so it was, a, it, was a, it was definitely a gift. And then when we put the record out, you know, because then he goes, I said, man, this is big time, man. Uh, <laughs> it was Dimebag Daryl, right? The pe other people, they call him Dimebag Daryl. Uh -huh. And so. Where, what was there still a group calling him Diamond? Diamond. No, he. It was, he was Daryl to me. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, but whatever. And, I, and so he goes, I said, man, we get to fucking say that uh, Dimebag Daryl or whatever played on our <laughs> CD. And fucking Daryl goes, now, man, you can't fucking put my name on that fucking CD, dude. Oh. He, goes, he goes, I'll get fucking sued. Yeah. And, oh, oh shit. fucking, man, I'll be in fucking, I'll, I'll be fucking financially destitute, if, you know. <laughs> and so he said, uh, he goes, he goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, you can call me Drunk Bag. And that, that's bag. why on the back of the CD it says Drunk Bag. It says special guest appearance by Drunk Bag Daryl. Wow. That's but, the, awesome. but then, that, you know, I was still making the record, you know, and finishing off the other tracks and stuff. And in, in reality, I would think that was the last recording that Daryl ever did when he was in Pantera because then he called me later and he said, you know what, Stuart? He goes, you can go ahead and put my name on the CD because wow. Pantera was finalized. And, and oh, so, right on. so to me, it was a privilege and that he did that for me and I would think that was the last recording that he ever did while he was still in Pantera that he did that fucking shit for me so wow thank you fucking Daryl appreciate it that's yeah, awesome dude. it is badass and to have a compliment you know from someone that's oh yeah, that, yeah. badass yeah you know, yeah like, tell me yeah. how badass I am yeah did you go around like ah oh, here's a pick you peasant like yeah. no no and no. all the other <laughs> shows <laughs> yeah cause we played that show the other night and Scott Shelby was there right <laughs> right and Scott Shelby's a badass motherfucker and I yep. think he played on two tracks on the last CD right that's right and that's what and I was he's a gonna... badass guitar player and he even said Stuart you're the baddest fucking guitar player in fucking Dallas Fort Worth right <laughs> you know I mean that's cool you know whatever yeah. you know but you know I'm a piece of shit really but I saw him like a couple weeks later he was at a friend of mine's doing some electrical work and he goes the baddest guitar player in Dallas Fort Worth Stuart Taylor you know fucking like, thank hey, you man. Scott thank hell you yeah. Scott. Oh, hell Scott, yeah. Man. <laughs> fuck yeah I don't even know what I'm doing hell so yeah, that's what I was going to lead into uh, this uh, album, 2016. Um, you brought in a bunch of your old school buddies and local musicians around here. I think you had George Call on it, right? From, fucking uh, legendary. Fucking love that fucking dude. George Call is a badass motherfucker, yes. And you had Scott Shelby and uh, who else? Todd Evans, Mobile Dev yeah. Camp, fucking my boys from That Will Be Done. I got the wrong hoodie on tonight, but... <laughs> But even this, 
Even uh, Conan said he would play on my CD if I make another. That sounds one, like so. a really fun yeah. album to make. To have it was made. difficult because, you know, like you're you're never going to be able to top, you know, Daryl. Right. You know, that I mean, that's something. That's just a magic gift from God, you know. But whatever. So what it was is Johnny O, which is you know the singer that sang on most of that album. You know, and I met him in a parking lot. And he, he knew this buddy of mine, Tyler, that works at GM, and they were talking in the parking lot. And so I met the kid. And, and mind you, Johnny has a huge history here in uh, Texas music. He played in a band called Gore. He, he was a singer for Determination. And I'm sure other ones that I miss, he was, uh, like, the big band he was in from Indiana was Kaolith. And, you know, but Johnny, you know, Johnny's got some pipes, man. That motherfucker can sing, you know. And so... I think I'd give him a number in the parking lot or whatever that day. And so he called me that night and he goes, Hey man, he goes, can I come over tonight? I said, sure. Fuck, you know, I ain't never doing nothing. I'm a loser. You know, I'm just drinking alone like fucking George oh, Thurgood, right? And George. so, so he comes over and he says, you know, blast out some fucking riffs, right? So I fucking start, you know, blasting some shit off. And this motherfucker, he starts singing, you know, just freestyle and singing. I said, holy shit, this motherfucker could sing, you know? I said, hey, dude, you know, why don't you sing on some of my shitty songs, you know? And he goes, well, I'm, you know, I'm here to be in this other... Tejasmosis was the band. Oh, okay. He had moved down here to sing with them. And so, whatever. So that went away, and, and I guess, you know, after time, whatever, the however that worked out, you the know, it or didn't around. work out, he fucking calls me, and he goes, hey, dude, it's that fucking time, man. It's fucking time to jam, dude. <laughs> Let's fucking jam right now, you know? Fuck yeah, And I dude. said, look, bitch, I got to get a fucking drummer, you know? Yeah. And you got to find somebody that wants to play, you know? And, and I, I like Ken Poland. I don't know if you know Ken Poland, uh, Excess Whiskey. Him and Ricky, oh, yeah, him yeah. And Ricky Lee. Yeah. You know, those dudes are two and people. And Paul the guitar guy. Yeah, yeah, Paul the Van Halen guy. Because, yeah. like, I played with them dudes one time, man, and it was a... But them dudes are badass motherfuckers to play yeah, with, you know? Plus, my music is so fucking simple. You know, they got you right in the pocket. I can tell you stories about all kinds of badass fucking players that have played in Scum Scunch. But uh, whatever. Uh, and so, and Ken, he actually, like, you always see him on the internet now. He's playing fucking, like, old-time ragtime at some mall in Grapevine or something. Wow. Hey. But whatever. Yeah. So I, I called Christian, you know, because Christian used to play in, uh, oh, God, you know, getting old. Gibson's was, Cemetery No, all that stuff, no, or? it was... Uh, we used to play with him back in the day. And, uh, oh, God, I can't think of the name of that fucking... Because they wanted me to be the guitar player in that band at one point. Christian Meyer? Yeah, Christian yeah, Meyer. fuck. It was, uh, that was I think it was something that was a P, I I think. But whatever. And it, it actually was, it was pretty badass music that they were playing. But I thought, man, you know, I'm fucking... I ain't fuck. that good to learn somebody else's shit. Yeah. You know, but whatever. But, he, you know, so I called him and he said, fuck it, let's do it. You know, so we started jamming. Johnny's going, who, who can I play? What can I sing? I said, look, motherfucker, we got to get some of these parts of songs down. And mind you, after we recorded that first record in 2003, by 2005, I already had that record done. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, I was writing songs. I, you know, I was working and working because I never wanted to be in a band where the band would go, is that all you got? Right. You know, all of a sudden they bring in another guitar player and he's playing chords and shit and then you know then i'm out of the band you know yeah. so i had to work extra hard and <laughs> so so i had all these old uh tapes and you know I, you know of raw tracks and shit and so that's what you know i said let's just work with this you know and so that that's where that album came about and we actually recorded that album twice and you know we had some problems you know that you're gonna have naturally right well, yeah you know and so you know johnny you know he wasn't there anymore but we, you know, I had 12 songs, so I, I want every fucking song. Like, there would have been more songs on that first record had they not uh, meth-mixed it right into Oblivion. <laughs> you know, I said, by the time you motherfuckers are done skitzing 24 hours a day, it's going to be an EP. You right. know, because they kept chopping songs off because they were chopping chunks of the recordings off wow. and losing them, you know. and Meth-mixing. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, <laughs> nothing like some good old meth-mixing, so... <laughs> So, uh, last, um, this last song we just played, uh, how many fuck-ups did you count? That just one. Just one? Who one made by? it? Yeah. Who, who made it? 
<laughs> but I thought it sounded good, man. Fuck no, them. I mean, fuck them. I mean, we're, we, you good. know, we're still playing. He stops, but it's okay. I mean, oh, he picked right back up. Yeah, I no, didn't notice right, it. Man. It looked like it was on purpose, actually. So yeah, I really, I mean, for me, when I watch a band, I don't want it to sound exactly like it does on the album. I want it to be something different. And I, until they started talking about it, I had no idea that you didn't. I would think that, that we would sound like, better live than a fucking album. Yeah, like you know, like you think of points. Like one time we were playing a Dream World. It's back when I had Steve Simpson in there. And, and, and see, we, we, we reworked the intro off the first album, me and Shawnee. We worked it that. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. And so we did that on our own. So, like, when Johnny shows up to practice, or no, to the gig, I said, look, we're going to play this fucking thing before the concert because you never come to practice, so we're going right. to fucking do this. And so we did that little intro. I know? like it, man. I'm and a so fan it, of it. It's just four times, right? You know, but it's got a cool tone or whatever. And so. We were at fucking Dream World, and I love playing Dream World, that big ass fucking stage with the soft floor, and you know, yeah. it's badass, right? I miss Dream World. And so dude. you get out there, and you know, I never had to look back at my drummer, right? Because we practiced like a motherfucker, and uh, and he quit playing on the third motherfucker, right? And I fucking, you know, fuck you, motherfucker, <laughs> you know. But, 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 but it sets the whole tone for the rest of the show because now you're really on fucking edge, you know, because now yeah. you don't you don't know what your drummer how many beers that motherfucker. Yeah, you got to worry there. about more fuck yeah, ups yeah, and how yeah. you're gonna handle yeah, what the shit. fuck. Yeah, and Come you're on. thinking about all that in real time while your fingers oh, yeah. are moving around. And, and, you know, and the whole thing is like when you're playing live music, I don't know what that is, but man, you let your mind wander for one fucking minutia. It you're going, fucks everything. Was that up. one or two? Exactly. And then you're looking around. What the fuck, dude? I remember those lyrics from the fucking song, you know? <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Yeah. I think so. I saw you at Dream World, and, and now just had some things connected for me, so I want to ask you really quick. I think I saw you at Dream World way back in the day with, I think, Lame, if I'm not mistaken. And mm -hmm. and this would have been years ago. But looking on your uh, on your site, I was curious, too, because on, um, on Scum Scunge on Facebook, it, there's a whole list of people that you guys worked with, and one of them said Cameron Taylor. That's right? Go ahead. I didn't even think about it until then, but that was also the singer of, of Lame was a guy named Cameron Taylor, so no, I'm just kind of... No, 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 uh-uh. Not the same. It's, 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 I'm going to do that shit with Bodie, okay? You play long <laughs> enough. That, that was my nephew, right? When I met my nephew, like, I never had anything to do with my family, really, you know? And so, and one time it was a Thanksgiving. It was really nice because my mother got to see all of her kids at one time. You know, first time in years, and my middle brother, he had two kids and one of them was a little 10 year old punk you know little <laughs> punk kid why'd you point at him when you said well that? because this is my new this is my <laughs> new, new this is my new fucking work model right here <laughs> yeah. so so this little kid he, he thought i was mr fucking cool right you know and i remember like i bought the bitch a guitar and sent it to colorado you know for christmas you know and so that and actually that little bastard he learned how to play that guitar really really good and so when he would come to Texas, I would get him every spring and summer, you know, try to mold him into a fucking man and make him, in, you know, to a oh, good right person. Right. And uh, so when he would come down, and there was different times of the band, like, you know, I'd say, look, well, you know, what song do you want to play? You know, and he would pick a song, a Scum Scum song, and then I would let him practice with the band, and then we'd, we'd go play a show, and I'd let him get on stage. I would just give him my guitar and let him play the so song. And so I remember, like, the last time, one of the last times he did it, like, the band wouldn't even practice it at all. You know, because somebody's got some fucking <laughs> issues, you know. Yeah. And that little kid was, Cameron was so badass, that motherfucker never got to practice that song with the band. He went up there at Dream World. It's actually yeah. on a live recording and that I just it. gave to a singer to refresh his memory of some of the lyrics. Oh, so. right on. Is yeah. it on YouTube or anything? No, no, I didn't, I didn't think so. so. Out there. There's footage out there no one's ever seen. Of well, Scott 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 Scott. I got a lot of recordings and stuff. Yeah, but yeah Cameron, that was my nephew, yeah, and... You know, he's a badass, and so I'm going to do that with fucking Bodie. He plays in another band with his sister and a little guitar player named Bodie. You want to shout so it out or no? Shout it out. Shout out. Band. Band. Yeah. Okay, so I'm in a band with um, my sister and my best friend called Volume 1. We're, a, we're on like Instagram and Facebook. Volume 1? Yeah. Is that? That's the name of the band? What kind yeah. of music? Heavy metal. Right on. Right, 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 right. What's your sister's name? Yeah. Sure. My sister's name is Sierra, Sierra. Cannon, and Bodie is the same as Bodie. What's his last name? Do we know? Bodie Mallory. Okay, Bodie Mallory. There Bodie we go. Mallory. And so I'm hoping that one day, if we get the band gelling again, that at one point, I, I want to give that kid that experience to get up on stage and play in front of some people, 
you know, because he, he's, he's learning all my songs all the time. Yeah, that's... You know, and so that's cool. It's ultimate form of flattery. Right. Yeah. You know, when people learn to bother to play Agreed. your shit, so... And is that your kit up there? Oh, yeah. That's a badass fucking kid. Right. I was editing this video. Hey, let's Thanks, say man. thanks to Dwayne Hannon. <laughs> okay. You, You've been Hannon us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting looking around and it's like, dude, he's like, he's back there. You're looking at like, you got all kinds of options on what to hit next. Yeah, know? we got to so, simplify that motherfucker. What's the name of this uh, second song? I don't know. All right. Well, let's play this song. It's probably Break Me Down. Yeah. Break Me Down. You know, you know the set list, right? Yeah. So right. break me down. How many fuck ups on this one? None. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think there's any. So. Right on. All right. And that wasn't a bad one last time anyway. No, no man, that was a cool recovery. fuck up. Very, very. The haters in the house tonight have many of them. God knows, I want to give you all a hug for all you people that don't really know me, but you love to break me down. Everybody with Scum Scunge. Awesome. Or yo, yo, a yo. part of Scum Scunge. You got Stuart Taylor here and Shawnee. 
the eleven year old drummer kicking some ass up there. Uh, Badass job, and you guys did perfect that time. You nailed it, right? And yes, of course, sir. yes. My camera falls over. And we're looking at the ceiling, so leave it to me to fuck it up when shit's going good. Hey, but thank you for that badass fucking footage. Sean or Shawnee? Shawnee? Yes. How long have you been playing the drums, dude? Um, about four years. Four years? Wow, okay. So, uh, in, in, is that the same drum set you've been playing the whole time? Nope. How did that happen? What happened for you? Um, I mean, for, at first I started with a small three-piece kit, and the thing was, I just start. I liked playing a lot. So, my dad was like, you know what, I'm just going to this badass kit. So basically, we went to Guitar Center, bought me this good drum set, set it up, and I just, it just there, you know. I just started playing on it, and lo and behold, now I've been with this guy. It's crazy, ain't it? He's got a really nice drum set in his bedroom, too. So, uh, <laughs> Who's your favorite drummer? Ray Luzier. Okay, you said that really, really fast, so that's good. Does that mean... Uh, is that is that somebody you patting yourself after, or is that just somebody that you really enjoy listening to? That's someone I like, really enjoy listening to. The reason why I ask you all these questions, I mean, it's really inspiring that you're as young as you are, and you're out there doing your shit, and it's interesting to know that you know exactly, you know, I asked who you, who you are influenced by, and you know like that. Um, it's, it's really a testament that it doesn't matter your age, you can go out there, you can do whatever the hell you want to do, as long as you just put your mind to it. Look yeah. at you blowing it up, dude. How much ass you got now? Uh, it's like, fuck, I don't answer that. I'm just kidding, dude. Don't answer that question. We're, we're, we're working on basic. <laughs> what for? This motherfucker, man, he, he, he listens to all kinds of music. He, he listens to fucking music that I don't really care for, but like when I first met him, like I thought, what the fuck? Right, but I go to the jam room and this little son of a gun is uh, playing this band called Dragon Force. Mm -hmm. oh. They got some oh, like yeah. some like seven minute long song, but it's all full shit. throttle the yeah, whole time. Yeah, and, and he and he sits there and he plays this shit. I'm going, look, man, Scum Scum is like this. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have uh, to be. Uh, yeah, well, right. No, I mean we're gonna do it with taste. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to keep up. Y'all gonna have to keep up with your <laughs> We're gonna do it with fucking taste. <laughs> we're gonna make the music the best it can be. Yes. What we're working on, so. Well, badass. And, and we, you know, we want to make sure we uh, mention uh, Derek Soto, the bass player. Yes. You know yeah. that, that's who's playing bass. You know, and Johnny brought that guy in, and you know, like you never know because we get other people come in, and there were some people that came in and, and they watched him play, and they said, <laughs> "No thanks," you know. Uh -oh. And so I've worked really, really hard, right? Haven't we played a bunch, man? I spent a lot of time working and working on these songs and stuff like that. And so, you know, I don't want to, you know, when you go play, you want to be as professional as fucking possible. Right. Plus, I, I want him to learn everything he can about the real, you know, what, you know, the real shit, you know? I mean... This dream world fantasy land shit and there's real shit. You got to go out there and work and play the fucking yeah, music, right. you know? Absolutely. No one sees the work behind. That's yeah, it's a lot of fucking know, work. So. You know, I didn't get to ride my Harley hardly any this summer, you know? <laughs> I'm thinking, fuck, I, you know, I need to go fucking Arrowhead hunting. I got shit, I, you know, but fuck it. You know, if we're going to go play some shows, you know, and then hopefully make some, you know, more music that... That's right. Know, I mean, it's important to me, you know, and to me it's real important, you know, the, the experience that he got when we played at the rail club was way better than that uh, skating rink we played oh, at, yeah, right? 100%. <laughs> I would hope PA, say that. The sound, like, <laughs> as soon as we started playing, you're going, bam, man, it's been fucking yeah. long fucking time, shit. The, the lights and everything are just amazing. Yeah, that would have been so funny, though, if you would have said, no, nah, the skating rink was way yeah. better. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I, I like setting the pace of the roller. Actually, you know? the best jams are like it. 11.30 at night, you know, strolling in from Avatar or, or fucking somewhere, and then Shawnee will go, let's go to the fucking jam room. Da -da -da -da. At that point, man, I'm fucking loaded, dude. You know, <laughs> fucking, we can rip fly some shit in that motherfucker. So, there's been some good late night jams. Thank you, Dwayne. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, and don't forget, wanna... uh, we gotta thank uh, Ken Hammonds back here, my neighbor. Yes. Been my neighbor for years, and and he brought you over last time. You he, were on yeah, the show he came too, the fucking so. last time. He came. He was able tour to make the show. Driver. He works a lot. Yeah, he's the new yeah, tour he's, bus he's, driver. He takes <laughs> tour bus <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know? At least tonight he is. So. Yeah, well, fun, thank yeah. you for taking time out of your day to no make worries, sure Stuart is here no and everything. Worries. And, and really appreciate it. Weeks. 
Man, we used to spend every fucking... Was it? Sunday night? Yeah, Sunday nights was our fucking night, you know? Yeah. But then the motherfucker got a good job and shit. Damn it. <laughs> it's kind of like when your buddy... You get your priorities faster. crooked. It's yeah. like when your buddy yeah. fucking... Priorities your buddy crooked. finally... Yeah. Your buddy finally scores a fucking... Uh, a woman, you know? And oh, then, right. And then adios to your buddy. You know? It always happens when but, you need him the most. Yeah, right. later. Right. Dude, later. You know? No worry about that happening with me, man. I'll be right there, buddy. <laughs> I ain't been late in years. <laughs> He'll tell them women to take a night. Women on the internet, hey, uh, hey, there's fucking Troy, Troy Welch. What's up, brother? Yeah, you want to shout out anybody else? Uh, Brandon, Fritz, and Johnson watching, man. What's hey, up? what's up, guys? Whiskey Dick, our first show. That's Fuck right. Yeah. yeah, you guys Fuck played yeah. with Whiskey Dick. You got Brandon Brazil, fucking Arkansas, Red Devil Lies, badass yeah. fucking band. With Need deep no back more. in the day too. Sadly, what's his name? Red what's Devil up? Lies, Brandon Brazil. What's up, Brandon? How's it going? I don't know you. Yeah, Arkansas oh, guys. Cool guy. A badass yeah, fucking band. Red Devil Eyes. Yep. Bad, a badass record, dude. They, they make music that'll make a motherfucker cry. At least me. That's that good so, southern stuff, you man. Fucking no play doubt. Some good, if you can make me cry, man, you do some badass shit. Right. So. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I can make... Well, you make me cry because of your attitude. No. <laughs> 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 All right. What's so your, what's this next song, then? We'll move it right along. Re- Rebel? Number three, no, Rebel. No, what does rebel. it say, Pam? Yeah. It says Rebel. No, it's Rebel. Okay, whatever. It's Rebel. Fuck if I know. I bet he got it. Put Rebel it against the truth. Fuck if I know. Nothing's after, boy. So let's check it out. Scum Scum's coming to everybody. <laughs> Go see him in the, on the 13th at Mavericks. 15th. 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 Friday night. <laughs> right on, yeah, nine, 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 Don't forget. I'll say 9 o'clock when it's really 9.30. Just make sure you get your ass there. <laughs> Wrong oh, video. So. Look at my ugly mug. Uh oh. <laughs> I would like to say this is the second time in my whole life that I have taken the stage clean and sober. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scared to tell right now. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. This next song is called Rebel.
Oh, All right, scum scums, oh, everybody. Woo! That was oh, Rebel. Yeah. I probably of... drank enough where I fucking feel better. No, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> waking up again. Now all these tracks, all these songs are off of this uh, 2016 album, or are they a mixture of both albums? No, no, no. There's nothing off the first album on there. Gotcha. It, we had recorded that album, and then that drummer. You know, I don't mind disparaging some people. You know, <laughs> so we recorded it at. Like the first time we recorded in my house, right? Uh huh. You know, and, and meth mixing. Well, no, 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 not in my house. <laughs> no, no, no. At first, so I said, "Well, fuck it." You know, we need to make a record, right? And and obviously, my business was way better, you know, back in the old days, you know. Yeah. And so I had a little money. So I mean, I remember I bought the fucking shitty drum set at first. That's how I started. Abe Hinojosa, this guy, he used to play in this band called the blues or booze hounds or whatever you know oh, and him and his brother you know his brother be out there going girl with the red dress on ding 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 and then the, the next song was called girl with the blue dress on ding 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 i said holy shit these motherfuckers are out here gigging and fucking getting their fucking dicks sucked and smoking weed and drinking and shit you know i'm at home fucking you know surely i can do this shit Whatever, whatever, that's some bullshit. Something to strive for, you know? Yeah, something to work right. on, you know? Aim high. And so I asked Abe, you know, I had that guitar, and I was playing it, you know, and it was giving me all those songs and shit and ideas. And so I asked Abe, I said, hey, man, can, can if you know, if I get some drums, can you play these motherfuckers, right? And so I bought this, like, cheap $300 drum set, you know, and so Abe comes over there, and he's fucking, you know, he probably had that, like, thing with the paintbrush, you know, like, going, you oh, know? Yeah, yeah. And it was like, what the fuck is this shit, right? And it just wasn't going right. And so, like, that, I think that weekend I went to the tattoo bar and fucking Junior, uh, War Beast, what do you call him? War Beast? What, no, Junior, the guitar player. Oh, Bobby. Bobby Tillotson. Tillotson? Bobby T Tillotson or whatever. Yeah. And so, and he was playing bass in a band. It might have been that Hog Lake band with Mike Porter or uh, with the singer that I got that? later on, uh, John too. Lester. So the motherfucker. He, and he goes, hey, man, I heard you got some fucking drums, dude. And Junior's a badass guitar player, right? Yeah, he is. He's one of the motherfuckers that can do everything. And so he goes, man, he goes, I can play the fucking drums. I said, no shit. And so he came up to the shop, and uh, he, he fucking, we were playing. It's like, oh, shit, this is fucking, well, it sounds like it's supposed to sound, right? You know? <laughs> and so we were playing for a little while, and he goes, hey, I know a singer. And uh, I don't know if we need to get into all that or whatever. We're going to yeah. run out of fucking time, dude. Oh, man, get into it. And so, so... So, whatever. So, the singer comes over, and uh, they like to smoke tons of weed, right? And so, my shop is in Pantico, Texas, and I hadn't been there that long, right? You know? And I remember the cops were hanging around a bunch when I first got there, you know? And so, I said, well, shit, man. I said, look, man, you, you ain't smoking that shit in my fucking shop. You know, I'm not going to have that fucking pot smell in my shop. And so, these motherfuckers are outside. <laughs> Smoking everywhere. fucking weed everywhere outside. <laughs> and just, I mean, it's a fucking bust, you know? Right. And so the dude goes, man, if I can't fucking smoke weed, man, I can't fucking sing, you know? And I said, uh, oh, shit, man. Well, fuck it. We can't do it here. Well, they had this little jam room over off Cooper Street, like in Colorado or whatever. Uh -huh. So I said, well, fuck it. Let's just go over here. And so, so we take the shit over there. And I remember, like, and then you learn not to leave your rig there, you know, whatever. Because all these, you know, motherfuckers are circling in this fucking you know, 24 hour day party place or right. whatever. But so we go over there and Junior's a good drummer, right? And, uh, he actually played bass in Scum Scunge and lead guitar at the end of Scum Scunge. It was really badass. Oh, he had a pretty, I didn't know that. Yeah. It was badass at the end. If you, if you can keep my mind on track, cause once you interrupt me, I'll get lost. But if you can remind me of what we were talking about, I can stay on track. So we would go, what were we talking about? We're talking about right now. We're talking about fucking Junior playing the drums. So we don't, we don't want to get too fucking far ahead. So I'm trying to stay focused. It's like a song in the middle of a fucking song, right? Because that's the way my mind works. So I, I would go to the jam room on Friday night, and you could, as soon as you got there, because like I had left my rig there before, right? And you get there, and it's fucking tuned. And you know, people tuned your guitar fucking to E or whatever the fuck, you know? And you get uh -huh. there, so I said, well, I ain't leaving my shit here no more. So I would drag my shit up there on Friday nights. I'd get there, and I'd see Junior, and as soon as I saw him, oh, no, no, no. I could tell that the motherfucker had smoked some damn weed, right? Uh -huh. And so when, when, when he smoked <laughs> weed, man, he was fucking worthless as a drummer, dude. Because he, he, he's overanalyzing, overthinking. 
couldn't get nothing done. And there was a guy named Tony. Like, I wish I could find that guy or whatever. But And so what happened was Lester fucking gave fucking uh, uh, Junior the boot. You know, so I got there on a Friday and he's all fucking butt hurt. And he got the boot. He said, fucking Tony's the new drummer, right? And tr- Tony's a badass drummer, right? Uh-huh. But, you know, he's a little fucking, you know... He's you got know, his... Yeah, you know, so... <laughs> But like we, man, but Tony would work with me, man, because I was playing every day. I play with motherfucker every day. If you're creating music with me, dude, and you're remembering them riffs and shit, because it all comes, it's like a thing. It moves around, you know, when you play with motherfuckers constantly, yeah. you know. And so, but like, I don't know, man. Whatever, it is what it is. I mean, because eventually, you know, he was, you know, I've changed so many members in this fucking band over the years, you know, but a lot of it has to do with drugs and shit and yeah. alcoholism. Well, you know, whatever. if you have a band around for two decades almost, then you're going to, you know, most of the time you're going to have a revolving door of uh, musicians. Yeah. So. But let, let, let's finish off on the junior story, all right? So what gig, what gig was it? Oh, it was it stolen? We could go back to the stolen recordings in 2005. Oh, because we're oh, let's go to the meth mix from the first album. Okay. Okay. So you need to have like a, a like a backtrack of all of your your files of music and call them the meth mixes. Well, so you, all you do is all you do is you just listen to the yeah. first record and go ah, <laughs> you know. So whatever. So let's so so I, I bought a little fucking little mixing board and and shit like that and. We, remember, we put a window in, in the washroom at my house so you could see outside and ran fucking and drilled a hole in the wall and ran cords out there and patted it all in. I'm knocking on all my neighbor's doors. Don't call the police, you know. Oh, we'll finish this shit up by 9 o'clock. Let me get these drum tracks fucking done, you know. And oh, so everybody was cool. So we got that done. So then I'm at my house, you know. It's fucking 11 o'clock at night. You're fucking... Uh, loaded, right? You know. <laughs> and so these motherfuckers, they start showing up at your house like... 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night, fucking wanting to record and wow. fucking around. I said, man, yeah. hell no, motherfucker. I got a job, bitch. I said, <laughs> right. look, y'all take this shit and take it over to that fucking trailer, you know? Right. And so well, that album turned out how it was. But like this album, like I said, it was basically kind of done in 2005. And so we, we were working that in, in my shop, you know? Because at that point, daddy had bought the fucking PA and the fucking the power amp and the fucking things and all that all shit. All the bells and whistles. Yeah, and so he brought that computer in there and so we, we record all this shit and the drummer goes, I'm, I'm going to take this home. So he took it all home and that was it. That was the end of that. And, oh, and I was able to put out that bullshit fucking uh, pile of shit three song EP but I don't think anybody has it because I hand pressed each one. Oh, I probably wow. made like 10 of them, you know. It's a giant jack off. You know, I think the band was imploding again or whatever. Wow. But yeah, he fucking, he damn sure, but you know, whatever, you know, it, it, it damn sure helped, made it easier when I made that fucking record, you know, because, you know, in the singer, we had played all those songs live, like I had this uh, recording from Dream World, you know, that I recently gave to a singer, and, uh, you know, and it has Cameron playing on it, and, and old, old Roy Murphy, God bless his soul, the motherfuckers that used to fucking... You know, fucking down with the fucking scum scunge. My designated yeah. driver that couldn't see at night, you know. Wow. He was my designated driver. He'd be driving. <laughs> yeah, not, oh, shit. I'm going, shit, motherfucker. I don't get that fucking loaded bitch. I'm going to drive home. This right. fucking sucks, you know. But, you know, God bless his fucking soul, too. But I don't know where we were going. Oh, Junior. I said about Junior at yeah. the end. Okay, so. What was the gig? It was. That was Dwayne. Uh, Roddy. Yeah, so disclaimer real quick. If you think any of this is too explicit for Shawnee here, uh, his dad's standing right over here. So he's Thank you, and y'all. he's being and, and who am I? Dad of the year. Uh. <laughs> so go after him and not us. <laughs> and who am I? And this man is my second father yep. and my best friend. Yeah. My two dads. This is the name of the new <laughs> album. I'm the cool dad. <laughs> You're the cool dad? I'm the cool dad. But you know what? No drinking, no smoking, no right. pot, no drugs. I'll beat your fucking ass. That's how it goes. And play the guitar Just, and play the drums. Right? good, right? I don't care how old you are. I still with your ass. <laughs> no, because my, my nephew the same thing. You know, when he was a kid, 12, I used to, have to get power attorney on him. You know. Oh right. I don't tolerate none of that bullshit because right. I don't want anybody to go through what I went through. Right. So. Yeah. I don't blame you. So I want the best for him. When he turns eighteen or twenty-one, that's a you know that's his bag. Until then. Hey, that's of course. That's why it's good you have a young drummer too because. You, 
You know He's what? not allowed to buy I, that I, shit. Look, until... I, I'm an old motherfucker, right? You know, I'm still like 12. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still his age in my mind. But, you know, if, if he buckles down and listens five years from now, you know, he could be Ozzy Osbourne's drummer or whatever. Yeah, yeah totally. So. I'm and, just, you I'm know, there's to... always a demand for drummers around here. Well, when so you're you... 60, he's going to be, what, you know, 32. Whenever you're 60. No. Whenever you're 60. 25. 25. Oh, 15. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be 15. You, you look way young. But the I'm point is, shit. point is, by the time you're slowing down, he's going to be speeding up. So I, ain't I didn't mean to cut you off, brother. Oh, you're fine. No. No, when, when, when I get stricken or whatever, yeah. Whatever. I, I hope to play with this motherfucker. In, in, the, in this new version, you know, whatever it's coming up, so. Good deal. Good, but no, let me, I was going to tell you about Junior. Yeah. So we're going to do this fucking tour, man. It was Rotting Corpse, right? Fucking Walt Traxler, right? <laughs> and uh, and uh, Spiracell from Houston, Texas. Mm-hmm. Badass fucking band. That's another band that'll make you fucking cry if you can go find their music on the internet. Uh, God bless uh, that singer. He, he committed suicide, but whatever. But we did this little fucking three-day tour, and that's what it was. We were in the jam room, and so we had to give Steve Simpson the boot, right? And and Randy Cook, is he was the bass player and drummer in Rotting Corpse. Mm-hmm. He's the drummer for Iron Jaw. Mm-hmm. Randy, okay. Randy Cook. Okay? Yep. So Randy Cook was the bass player at this point, right? And so we go to the jam room, and we go, what's fucking next? And then Randy sat behind the drums, and... Dun-dun-dun, dun-dun-dun. I said, oh shit, you're the fucking drummer, right? <laughs> so so then we're going to do this fucking three-day tour with Rotting Corpse and Spire Cell, and Walt had the badass, we were in real tour buses, right? I mean, wow. who knows how many thousands of dollars it cost to do this fucking tour, right? Wow. And so, for, it costs a fucking thousand dollars a day to just keep a bus running, dude, because they run 24 hours a day, and paying the fucking driver it costs money. Yeah, so, sure. so I said, fuck it, we got Junior to play the fucking bass. You know, and so Junior played on those gigs, right? And then at the end of uh, the Scum Scunge career, like, it was when we played the Dime Fest in 2006, and, and Junior goes, hey, man, he goes, can I fucking play that fucking lead on fucking Abuse, you know, at that concert? I said, well, damn, bitch, can you play it? Yeah. You know, that's a badass ripping fucking lead, He'd be right? pretty close. And, and I told him, I said, look, you know, he called me like a, a week or so before the show, I said, if you want to come to my house, I'll just play that riff over and over for you, and you can, nice. you know, do whatever. You know, he, you know, he, he fucked it off, but he, I remember he showed up that day of the show, and he had like some kind of little box with a CD in it. Uh huh. But I guess he just listened to it on the headphones upstairs at the Ridgely Theater, and fucking did whatever he did, and then he came out on stage that night, and if you watch him old videos, it's fucking badass, right? And so every concert that we played all the way until 2008 for the next couple of years, if he was around, he would show up at the show and he and would play. Bus that he, 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 sometimes he would come in the middle of the show and like, you know, play a song and then and then he would step off the stage and then come back and play the last few songs with us. And because, you know, Crack Your Knuckles was a big hit and Abuse was, you know, songs that people used to sing along to when we played. And it was pretty fucking amazing to have Junior. Yeah. He played in all aspects of the band except for singing. You know, I don't yeah, talk to him. I don't know what he's up to, but he's a good musician. I yeah, think he's yeah. playing in that uh, Kill for Mother. Yeah, Kill for Mother. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. He okay, always cool. he always comes out wearing a mask or makeup. Or yeah, something, makeup so. yeah. He's Kill dedicated to the craft for sure. So, but uh, what do we got next, Pam? Left you with nothing. Left you with nothing. Is that no, right? It's nothing. It's called nothing. Oh, it's just. Oh. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, nothing, so. oh. I thought she was just telling you. No, you left me with nothing. Nothing left. Nothing. So let's go ahead and do this, Scum Scunge. And we just found out that the 13th show is also. 15th, in, motherfucker. The 15th show is his birthday show. Oh, I won't get it right. Blow up the 19th. Just found out that the 13th. Oh. Yeah. Scum Scunge! Start! Hey. Dude. All right. This one is going out to anybody who has been done wrong and stabbed you in the back. Who was close to you, your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your sister, your brother, your band member. And left you with nothing.
that shit right there. That's a true professional right there. It's like you never missed If the motherfucker would have handed me a joint in the other hand, shit. That is great. That is so Shout out to the dude that handed out the beer, man. That's a funny ass shit right there. All the movements just came back to you. Thanks for not cutting that out. This bump and then a beer, same motion. Oh, shit. So. We're here Jeez. with Scum and Scunge today. Yes. Shawnee the drummer, Stuart, and uh, Derek on bass, and your singer is still going to do a couple more shows through November. He said that we could do whatever on November 30th, and, you know, we tried to go get it. Like, I thought we could go play at Stumpy's right around the corner from the jam room on a Thursday night yeah, or something. Because yeah. the singer works nights, and, you know, I'm not trying to put nobody out or anything, yeah. but in reality, probably really the, that'll be the last concert we played with this version of the band it's kind of sad you know you work for months and months and months to put all this together but yeah you know if, you know if you ain't having fun you got to do something with your family you got to take care of business you know i mean I, i've been through so many lineup changes in this band and you guys haven't yeah. set up a pool get or uh, uh show yet you, know, you can play in here do that. oh yeah just play right. here before you, you guys leave here. man cool. do a live show from here so oh, please come in here and talk and blow this bitch up don't have to be on a sunday we can figure that out oh, all right yeah for real what are you guys whispering about whatever uh he just announced that he's leaving the band so we're all <laughs> <laughs> oh, looking for a new drummer now <laughs> Preferably between 11 and 18 years He's old. He's like, I'm uh, too old for this shit. shit. <laughs> Anything from 18 to 80, I don't give a fuck. He's the rock, come on. <laughs> so on the 15th, you have a show coming up yeah. at Mavericks, yeah, and it's going to be your birthday show because your birthday's on, on the 19th, 19, just a few days later. So yeah, might as well, you might as well all you guys out there, hit Mavericks up and bring Stuart a present. Not the 13th. The, it's not the 13th. Okay. That's right, it's not the 13th. So. Come he out. likes arrowheads and fanny packs. Yeah, I need, I need a new fanny And shark teeth. Need new <laughs> arrowheads yeah. and fanny packs sounds like an so. 80's band. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Scumscunge is an 80's band. <laughs> hey, right. so. Best of it, though. And guitar picks and sweatshirts. That, no. Guitar picks and sweatshirts, man. Uh, you guys know that still means. Fun, so. You know what? If you want to bring me something to eat, that's great, man. <laughs> Give me beer. a nice feast. <laughs> Buy him a beer, that's for sure. So he will drink. I cannot wait to. Sir, you see what you just did on there? What? It's gonna about to show up. You see it? Right? <laughs> look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> oh, <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> Give me a beer. <laughs> I need a beer. <laughs> Give me two beers. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. You're the one who noticed that. That's insane. Uh, we, we didn't think anything of that. What's funny is none of the audience out there has any fucking clue what we're laughing at. Right well, now. I have to go ten seconds back in time. Uh, yeah. Right, so. Rewind ten seconds. Somebody was doing something dirty. But uh, Renaissance man Stuart Taylor and his band Scum Scunge and Arrowhead yeah, yeah. farm owner. He owns a bank. The only guy I know that owns a a bank. A bank and a cow. And yeah, uh, a bank with no room. Those are the only guys. <laughs> <laughs> no one needs to know that. No one needs to know that. Those are just formalities. Yeah. Yeah. Little details. But uh, one thing that you guys obviously probably know him from the most without even knowing it is his iconic photography that has been published all over the world yeah. in metal magazines that I, I grew up with since I was his age. Fucking... Hit Parader, Metal Circus, Injection. Metal Edge, Metal Maniacs, Metal yeah, Forces. So yeah. I got some uh, pictures pulled from your archives. Uh, if we pop them up, can you tell us a little story behind it? Maybe so. I, yeah, I mean, if it's my and picture. Go ahead and pull right one now. up. It doesn't matter what, what it is. And uh, <laughs> so in your photography gig, that kind of just came down. You just like taking pictures. I know. That's, that's all I wanted to do was take pictures of rock bands. When I was 15 years old, that there was it. Go. All right. Now, what about this one here? Get I, it. Can, I couldn't tell you the magazine. Okay. Yeah, it was, that, 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 that was that. There you go. I think Cover me. They played with Metallica at Tarrant County. Wait, there. go back. What? I can't go back. It's a slideshow. So Why'd you make a slideshow then? Well, whatever. Well, pause whatever. the slideshow. There's the bank. There's all okay. the band. That, that was in Daryl's bedroom at his mama's house when Metallica played with Pantera back in, they say, 84. Whatever. Or they say so did you pause it? 84. That, that was at the hot, heavy photo shoot, I think. There's Damon DePierre in the back. He's not here anymore, so God bless his soul. Yeah. Oh, that, that was in the studio. That, that was like during Vulgar Display of Power. Daryl had them bullshit eyeballs. That was, in, I think, in Hit Parade or something yeah. like that. 
Figure it out, Pam. I Click. Slowed him down. Figure it out. Well, no, because there's a 10 thing. second delay, Pam. So. Oh, no, it's okay. It went backwards. Whatever. Yeah, she needs to pause it. You need to pause it. Or use an individual photo. Pull up an individual photo because there's a 10 second delay here. So. What he's saying about the photos is like from two photos ago, so it's going to be confusing. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll revamp it. it we'll figure it out. Down. Look, I mean, that's so, Walt. That's sorry. That's so while well, Pam figures that out. Uh, that's what the fun of live video you, is, man. What was like your first camera when little snap things? And you got and pictures yeah. of Van Halen and... Oh, it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a 110 like rectangular thing where you would go tick and then you would cock the whole camera oh yeah yeah that's when i shot ted nugent that was the first concert i ever shot may 2nd 1979 at the walter Koble hall in russelsheim west germany west germany uh, yeah i lived in germany when i started and in ted nugent was the shit you got figured out he played like in a gym or whatever it's the loudest thing you ever heard in your life Pam, is that stopped yeah okay here we go there now the that's, the that's famous it. uh those pictures are famous as shit all over the internet if, if everybody knew every time they pirated those on every I love Dimebag, Daryl site, Metallica fan page, and all that shit. That's I mean, I'm the guy that took those pictures. That was in Daryl's bedroom at his mama's house. Right. right. Over there off Monterey. And I heard that uh, Randy Bell told me that all that shit on the walls well, is you know, boogies, I, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's all <laughs> hawkers, yeah. <laughs> those are all hawkers. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, go ahead and pull up the next one then, Pam. I don't want to get into too much negativity. But what year was that? I think it was 84, but if, if, if anything, it was eight, early 85 because it, it was before Master of Puppets and before I Am the Night. Okay. Oh, they, okay. When those pictures were taken. It was on a break that they had on a tour, and if I get into it too deep. Yeah, you, know, you don't have to. We'll yeah. Save that for another time or, or your book you need to have written. So. Right. Yeah. And this or one or here? the documentary that you need to finish. And Daryl Arnberg, he started one with me, and so hopefully somebody ever. Oh, uh, it's a race now. Well, somebody fucking does something before something happens to me to get all these stories out there. Oh, you're going to live forever, man. Oh, yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, not, not the way I felt this morning after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and then this picture you were talking about? Is that Rex I, I, Rocker there? On I, the... I don't know if that was the hot and heavy photo shoot or what. Look, look at my fucking goofy Way in the back background. looking up with your glasses on. Oh, man. Those specs I had back in the day. I could tell you stories about those badass glasses I wore, dude. I mean, I was a chick magnet. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say Rex broke them glasses one time, too? Yeah, that was at fucking Savvy's. That's why I got the boot from Savvy's, right? Because I never had, my glasses were so fucked up that the, the little pieces fell off in right. the middle. And so they were cutting my nose. So I had, like, tape on them and shit. You know, I'm living on the streets, you know? And fucking my mother one time. Next one, Pam. My mother broke down, and she said, hey, I'm going to help you get some fucking glasses, right? And so she took me over to the Six Flags Mall. I got some new fucking shades, dude. I had new glasses that weren't cutting my face to nice. pieces. And, uh, and Pantera's playing at Savvy's. And it was backstage. Am, they, I'm gonna fuck, am I going to fuck your whole thing up? No, 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 no we are just moved on to the next so, one. So. so fucking, we were backstage in that room. And fucking Rex Rocker goes, hey, man. And he fucking... Them he off. flipped them off my face, dude. I fucking lost it, dude, man. I've been wearing motherfuckers cutting my face for fucking years, right. man. So I grabbed that motherfucker. Oh. Watch out. I'm just going to use you as a prop. <laughs> <laughs> Hold a on, prop. bitch. A prop. Okay. a prop, motherfucker. <laughs> and I said, you fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> and I punched a hole in the wall. wall. Yeah. And so I fucking started walking through the club, you know. I don't want this motherfucker. <laughs> so I fucking kicked over every fucking table and shit. And they fucking, shh, 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 fucking grab me. You going to fucking jail, mother? Ain't going to fucking wow. jail. And uh, <laughs> so Rex, Rex and them fucking Daryl said, "Hey man, don't take the you know him to jail." And uh, whatever was fucked up, because then I got the band from Savvy's, right? So when Metallica played, you know, if you had different pictures, you, you would pop them up. But when, when I found out that Metallica was playing, I wasn't allowed in that club, dude. So that was oh, a that's crazy right. deal. That's why I was there, man. I, I took those pictures of uh, Metallica outside because I thought, I'm not going to get in this motherfucker because I've just been banned from this son of a bitch. Yeah. And, uh, man, I was able to sneak in. Cut through that door. I went trying to get as many pictures. No, I, I went to the bathroom. I just sat in the bathroom all night. <laughs> <laughs> what was cool was that Daryl, in order to save his ass, went and, and did a promotion with the uh, that eyeglasses company. And if you see the new picture here, they had sent him a new pair of glasses as well. 
<laughs> so there's Daryl with his new glasses. Oh, that's not the story with this picture. No, no. no. Oh, no, 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 I was the other picture. Oh, no, that's just some bullshit. Oh, I thought this was. I thought this was Daryl's no, new no, glasses. No, that's just some bullshit there. And so, <laughs> so and like, and I'm I have kidding. this picture of Daryl where he's standing up on the urinal and he's going. Ah, and he's all gacked out because he's about to play with Metallica, right? He's got his Ride the Lightning shirt on. And uh, and as soon as they went out on stage and started playing, man, I just ran up there and started taking as many pictures as I could. I was just waiting for some motherfucker. Yeah. You know? But at the end of the night, the guy's name was Rick. He played in that band Savvy or whatever. And uh, he said, man, it's all cool, man. You, you know, you can come awesome. back anytime you want. But, but like I said, you know, there was only like 30 people there. It was a badass. It was probably one of the most amazing gigs and then we went back to the house and Daryl jammed all night with fucking Hetfield but then we did that photo shoot and his mom was you know make sure I did the pictures I took pictures of Lars like holding Hit Parader magazines and shit in the living room but yeah. we did that photo shoot in the bedroom those pictures are famous as fuck but nobody knows that I took them exactly. because <laughs> when I sold it to you for a dollar in 1985 you know because I was hungry and I needed a fucking you know a piece of pizza or whatever you didn't know they were going to invent the internet and then all these right. uh, motherfuckers are going to be scanning shit and publishing it, out. it yeah. without you know, it, now they're yeah. 50 years old going oh well that sucks oh check out these pictures I got a Pantera there's no Pantera they scan them and they're fucking you know <laughs> fucking yeah. that's why you guys if you want to see more of Stuart's uh, photography he started his own page finally uh, it's only been around for a couple few years right I just got Stuart Taylor photography on what, Facebook, Facebook or whatever yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, you so. know, and I really don't put anything out. I mean, my shit, I have boxes of shit. Right. In reality, it should be, like, I just recently watched a documentary on uh, Niels Lozauer, right? And he was one of those guys, when I was a kid, that I looked up to, like Ron Pownall, Neil Preston, you know? Because I'd see those posters, and I'd see their, those names, and go, who are these fucking people? You know, but, like, some people, they had better parents and shit like that. You know, I was living on the streets. I, I probably lost half the work that I've done overseas and everything. Wow. You know? that's but I still awesome. have piles of Pantera shit and old negatives and stuff. That's awesome, you know? though. I mean, hopefully one day. Still so much you can do with that. Yeah, right? I know a lot, personally, I know, you know, me and all the uh, Dimebag groups out there, you know, Dimebag Sound and the metal scene and all I, this. I just, like, I'm so fucking busy all the time, you know, and, like, people go, why don't you do it, you know, while you're somewhat young or whatever, you know. I'll be like some old decrepit dude. Hurry up, let's fucking make this book. Oh! Uh, <laughs> I'll be like Rodney Dangerfield, you know. Yeah. I'll get famous when right. I'm 90. You, you have know? another gig and, to do. And then you'll make some money and then you'll die and, you know, and your dick won't get hard, so you're fucked. So what was up so, with this picture here? With the... That was just in the studio. That was, that might have been like, that was around Cowboys from Hell. It's just like that tattoo, you know, mm -hmm. when Daryl bought me that tattoo. It's the same motherfucker he's got. Oh, nice. When he got his record deal, he bought me that tattoo. And that Ooh. was, that was, uh, and that was a deal where he goes, you want a tattoo? I said, fuck yeah, motherfucker. Pull up and, the next uh, one, Pam. And there was a battle going on, you know, and I was living at the Gamma Shack, you know, he goes, you better be outside waiting, motherfucker. You know, I ain't fucking hanging around because he wants to get beat up. Or <laughs> right. So. Wow. All right. So obviously I was kidding about the glasses, but that's, that's an awesome picture. Yeah, I think that was. And then there's uh, Reinventing Metal. That was gear. a book I did with a guy in England. I remember that, yeah. That was, that was at my farm. Somebody took that picture of me. You can go to the next one, Pam? I need like a walkie-talkie or something. Here. Uh, go to the next one, Pam. Yeah. <laughs> next. <laughs> next. <laughs> Out. Destroy. Destroy. <laughs> should have been your book, Stuart. That was in the garage. There's Rex Rocker. And that was the Lars. same night. Yeah, that was the same night. Yeah, they yeah. played. There's a... and, they, and it was crazy to watch him play, right? Because, you know, Daryl's a badass, right? And so Daryl's... You know, but fucking Hetfield's over there going... Like a machine gun, you know? Uh -huh. And then, you know, there's those fabled stories or whatever, you know, about, like, you know, ripping off riffs and shit like that, you know, where, like, down below would be Master of Puppets and shit mm. like that, so... Whatever, but it, it, you know, that had I been like a guitar player, I would have really been paying more attention. But there was a bunch of other shit going on that night too, you know, and people just dicking out, you know, that Metallica was there, and I'm not gonna mention any names or anything. But yeah, people were dicking out. You, you save know, it for your you know, the next one, Pam. You save it for your book, man. That's when you write a tell-all, you know, because people right. wanna people wanna know these names. No, yeah, like my agent said, he goes, do you like where you live? 
Do you like your car? What? Do you like your business? He goes, Stuart, have you ever put out a book and all this shit that you fucking know? You know, you got to think about these things, you know, because everybody fucking loser. That, that was at that gig. That was outside that night. Look, obviously I'm wearing some free t-shirt somebody gave me, right? <laughs> Something swimming? <laughs> A&M Texas swimming? A&M swim team. <laughs> you know, I didn't give a fuck. I'm, I'm right. living on the streets, you know? And so it's me and uh, Daryl and Lars and Terry. And actually, the other part of the picture is cut out because you can see two ladies in the background. You oh, know, yeah? So, oh, so someone... Oh, Pam it. cut it out? No, I got it, yeah. You got it back so up? There, well, there, we don't want to, you know... Hello, ladies! You see uh, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, ladies. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, who's, who be that? Who be I don't that? know. You got to buy the book to find <laughs> out, right? <laughs> who be that? Why are they here? <laughs> Who wants to right. know the real story? So, <laughs> but obviously that was in the summertime, and obviously I had a lot more fucking hair. Damn sure no hair on my fucking face. No yeah, them uh, cocaine yeah. cowboy glasses. I mean, you know? no, dude, that, that was probably those. No, was that, those? Those are probably the ones that were digging in my face back then. <laughs> At least I had hair back then. No, nobody had no tattoos. You know, Daryl never refused facial hair. Right. You yeah. Know, that was that was no good for the eighties. All right, let's do one more, and then we'll play a video. Because we're the, running short on time now. Yeah, we'll we'll soon be. So yeah, go check out uh, Stuart Taylor Photography, and you're also on Instagram too, Stuart Taylor Photography. I'm on there, yeah. Yeah, but I don't. You know, He's I don't like, know good luck. Is, you can find it on Facebook, on though. Go check and out this Apex is a, Signs. That That's, was the first photo shoot we did for Washburn, and that was at Pantigo Christian Academy back there in the back. There was a, like a, a building back there, but we did some other photo shoots. we down on Division that night or that day, and that's when he first got his. Uh, his actually, that, that picture's been pirated. It, it, it's been on the cover of a magazine. I, like, I actually got to get some money out of a motherfucker that stole my shit and put it no on. Shit. Good. It was like it was the Italian version of Metal Hammer. They used that picture on the cover of the wow. magazine. On the cover, huh? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, man. So yeah, I think everyone, any metalhead that's you know been around in the '90s knows that photo right there, man. So I that think was a young, uh, skinny Henry. <laughs> and that would have been after the Cowboys from Hell, right? Yeah, so this, obviously this, 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 yeah, this is, I don't know, it was like 95 or something when he got that fucking deal. I don't know. Very I, cool, I, I'd have to look on, I can't keep up with all that shit. I, right, I don't people mean. always go, hey, Dimebag Daryl's fucking guitar, you know? And I'm thinking, there's pictures of me holding that guitar on top of a van after a 1984 guitar show, but it wasn't the lightning bolt part of it. You know, but I'm thinking, I don't keep up with, MSL and all that, you know, I didn't give a fuck, you know. Yeah. All right. Pam, can you bring up that one picture with uh, Diamond Stewart? Just them two. Uh, there's this picture you took that's uh, on your photography page of uh, you and Daryl, and it said after a guitar show in 1985. I think 84. But that's one of my favorite pictures that you have. We were standing, like, and we were trying to hold the reunion ball. There's a right. series of photos that come out. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So I love that photo of you guys. You know, it's like I wish I was around then, you know, and, and hanging what, you out. You know, with who knows, like a guitar geek, he would know that that might be the one that got painted or whatever. You know, they, they trip oh, out. Oh, the, the Dime from Hell, the blue one? Yeah. And or the so Dean that, from that's, Hell? That's, 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 uh, I think that's that guitar, but all those kids talk about it, but I, don't, I never kept up with that. You know, but all, I we're, bet doing, it is. all we're doing, like. The baddest picture I have, I don't want to say nothing because some motherfucker's going to scan it and put it on the internet, but I have some badass pictures I took of Daryl after that deal. Black and whites. Because, you know, back then it was film. It was actually mm-hmm. a true art form when you right. took photographs. You know, you used black and white film, color slides and shit, 64, whatever, you know. It was way different, dude, when I did that shit. So, yeah. you know, all these photographers nowadays, if you got money... Like, if I had money, I don't even have money. Like, my, my piece of camp shit camera is a $600 piece of shit, you know? But if I had 4000 bucks, man, I could go out there and play on Photoshop all night and make you look like a fucking, you know? Like, they take pictures. I said, I've never taken a picture of like that. Just like that. Yeah. You know? Everyone's so. got a camera now well, in yeah, their pocket. That was on the cover of that In, in, in the Street magazine, and, you know, that kid interviewed me or whatever. Pimpa Pantigo. Pimpa Pantigo. Yeah. Boosh. 
Right on. So let's yeah. do uh, another song from uh, Scum Scunge. Fuck yeah. Twist Got a show twice. coming up on the 15th. It's going to be a birthday show now. In Arlington. <laughs> the 15th, In Arlington. Right? Right? Come on now. I got it. Not Wake up, son. Oh. Wake up, motherfucker. <laughs> this dude's going to be playing the drums. Yes. So excited. Fucking a 23 piece drum set, too. Hey? There are more pieces. Let me introduce you guys to my family. Yeah. This man to the left of me. Is the real backbone behind this band. I met this man, and uh, Zach got drunk with him at his house, and I, I, uh, I sang for him. And, uh, he said, "Man, I'm gonna do this again, Mr. Stuart Taylor." Let me introduce you to the major rager on the four-string, motherfucker, over here. One of the most naturally talented men I've ever met in my life. Damn good friend. Yes. Derek Soto, ladies and gentlemen. And the stick man. The guy that he is. The backbone. Yes. He's the most amazing 11 year old kid I've ever met in my life. Shawnee Hannah! You got a little old me up here just bullshit. My name is Johnny. You guys are the shit. Thank you very much. This one's going out to anybody who has ever had a problem with methamphetamines or still may even share the struggle. This song is called Twisted Glass.
All right, awesome. scum sponge, everybody. Yeah. He's back. I'm back. He's back. He's back. back. We're back. Back again. We're back. Guess who's back? We're back. <laughs> Tell some men. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> so, fucking badass. You can go ahead and take the uh, iconic photo by Stuart Taylor off. You guys... Want to see more photography? Go to Stuart Taylor Photography on Facebook and Instagram. So, uh, you want to go talk to the man and see him live? November fifteenth, he's going to be having his birthday show there too. Just came about. You heard it here first, right? Yes, sir. All yes, right. sir. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. is that show? It's at Mavericks. The Maverick on, on the Main 15th. Street, downtown Maverick. Arlington. Maverick Richard Sports Chavez. Club. It's going to be badass. That's right, Arlington, baby, center of the Metalplex. It's right on the, it's like on a dead end road, you know, right in that old part of Arlington. It's fucking, it's cool. And who are you guys jamming with? I have no idea. You know, it said TBD. It used to be TBA, to be announced. And yeah, now it's to be determined. Yeah, to okay, be determined. I, I was wondering what that stood for. Yeah. yeah. Determined. Now, and before they were holding back to announce it, but now and they so want now, to but now they, they named a band, but. There's one other band with you, but. Show. But it's like, you know, they, they, Trump, there's going to be, Trump like, it's not all Trump. heavy metal there. And it doesn't matter because, like, like Scum Scunge is not like a heavy metal band, you know? Where it's like, I'm like the thrash. music, it's not like it's going to run your out of the fucking bar when we play, right. you know? I mean, the songs aren't that fucking rude. It's like Twisted Glass is like the most insane I mean, it depends, you know. And there's no guitar solos. As long as you don't put me on the microphone, we're fine. Oh! Uh, fuck you, <laughs> fuck that, motherfucking, fucking, 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 fuck shit, fuck, fuck, fuck your kids, too. How come you haven't gotten on the microphone yet? Oh, I don't deserve to be on the microphone. Oh, he's humble. No, we just... Wait a minute. He's humble he, and modest. He, no, nah, he, he's just a little kid. When I was his age, man, I was smoking, smoking weed, yeah. huffing gasoline, you huffing were, glue. you were an idiot back then. You were no, dumb. man. I was fucking on my way up. I was working my way up. <laughs> That's right. You didn't up and come. Since you weren't doing that, yeah. <laughs> you had the option to play or sing. Yeah, anymore. right. We don't ever want that to happen, ever. So shout out to all you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, thank you. I can't see uh, Scott Hall. Uh, is that Sharon Norton or Shannon? I'm sorry, I can't see that. There far. was somebody else too. I Jeff Beaton uh, Jones in the house though. Jeff and, Jones, uh, what's up, man? You know, Bob he, Kirk. Jeff that's Jones. another fucking badass drummer. Bob Kirk, fuck yeah. Bob what's Kirk, up, bro? how are you? Midwest Cartel out of Indiana, fucking Valparaiso. Valparaiso. Yeah. Big thanks to Bob Kirk for doing what he does for our show. By the way, man, man love sharing you, dude. it like he shares it like 40 times. I don't this even know who's awesome. Who he shares it too, but he nah, really Bob Kirk, it. man, he's a cool motherfucker. Thank you man. so much for. It's been uh, a while since I've seen his ass. Hey, oh, yeah, I'm, I'll mention it later. Hey, let's I, mention uh, uh, Suicidal Angels. Avatar. Avatar. Oh, Alien Weaponry. Alien Weaponry. Bands that... Alien Weaponry is badass, That we all want to be. Cool motherfuckers. Those are badass thank, guys. Thank these bands, you know. So, Plus all the local shit, too. Don't want to be a fucking end row, but... Uh, but, yeah. So, what do you guys have planned after this uh, next show? At we're, we're just gonna we're gonna be practicing, man. Are you, you still know? booking in November while you? No, have? I mean, because if we can't get some bullshit fucking local show and Johnny's leaving at the end of November, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just working on that new singer, or, you know, that I can get a new badass motherfucking singer, and me and him know more than most, and uh, I, I'm just not gonna say anything. You and know, your I'm, bass player, Derek, he's solid. De right? No, Derek, when Johnny said he was quitting, Derek, like, Derek said. We were at practice. It was badass. It was really, really nice. He goes, dude, hey, man, dude, I don't want to go anywhere. You know, and I don't know that guy that well, but he's a very talented guy, right? Uh -huh. But he's just like a skate guy, and he's a singer. He's a guitar player. He, he's one of those dudes, you know, he's all over the place, yeah. right? He's a very talented person. And, you know, and then Johnny brought him in. You know, I don't know this guy from anything, but when Johnny said he was quitting, he goes, hey, man, hey, dude, I don't want to go anywhere. He goes. And he's like, I'm he, staying right yeah, here. He goes, I'm staying right fucking here. He goes, I don't quit that other band I was in because wow. he goes, I know that they're not going anywhere. And he did. He paid me very nice compliments. He goes, Stuart, you know those songs you write are fucking insane. He said anything that I can do, you know, to be a part of this fucking very band. Nice. And I said, dude, all right, that's so what I, you want to hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I know yeah, he's man. fucking rock solid. He's rock solid with me and Shawnee. And so the next singer that we get in there, you know, and uh, and I've talked to some real talented motherfuckers too, but I don't, I'm not going to mention their names or anything, you know. I've sent them songs and stuff, but 
I think I've already got a guy. Actually, I, you know, yeah. I, I just, you know, I, I just, I let Johnny finish out what yeah, he's doing. Yeah, you don't want to count your chickens before yeah, they before hatch. Yeah, before they hatch. And, and so. fucking Johnny O is a badass fucking singer. And if he moves back to Indiana and gets back in Kaoloth or whatever they do up there, but, you know, he does have an extensive history here in Texas, you know, playing with yeah. Texas bands, but Johnny's got some fucking pipes and it's kind of sad to see him go, but. But bottom yeah. line, don't count scum scums out no, yet, baby. Fuck no, fuck no. And uh, your buddy, you know, whenever he comes back down from Indiana to visit or anything, you guys maybe still be playing, hopefully, and maybe you can jump on stage for old time's sake and bust out a song or two. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, if I could get all the motherfuckers that played on that album from Die Will Be Done and, like you said, George Call and, you know, and badass motherfucking lead guitar yeah. players... That, that that record is magical, dude. Like you know, I couldn't get reviews anywhere. And like the one review I got, they go, "This record fucking sucks." I read right? that. And, you know, <laughs> oh, th- man, this music brutal. is fucking. They, they backed on everybody yeah, except it, maybe George Call. Well, right? they, like... they, they just said that the music was so horrible. <laughs> interchangeable it, but it was a great review right but they did say <laughs> was a great review. You, you gotta fucking give uh Stuart taylor props That's that right. he got these motherfuckers from sweden and yep. fucking africa and fucking all over the fucking planet justin neil manning i, I hate to leave anybody fucking out man i mean list. i mean Same badass man. motherfuckers that played on here chris drapo uh, Carlos Deadman, only me and him know who that is. Oh, yeah. Chris, Thy Will Be Done. Jim Cry, badass oh, fucking oh, guitar man. player, volume dealer. Yeah. Uh, Scott Shelby, Dorian Rainwater, oh, fucking yeah. probably the best. If you ever get to see Dorian Rainwater play guitar, wow. that is the biggest fucking treat that you'll ever fucking see in Who's your he life. play with? He, he, his grindcore shit, Noisier was the band. I met him in San Diego. Henry Diaz. And uh, Todd Evans from Mobile Death Camp, he was the first guy that came into the studio and played there. And he, and he was the I one that Mobile said, Death I ain't playing for fucking Brawler, I'm playing for Scum Scunge. Fuck yeah. And that's when Scum Scunge Henry came back Diaz. around. So And Jonas Kajelgren from uh, Scar Symmetry as well, well so badass. thank god for all the badass good guitar. job guys and all the yeah. singers yeah. i'm not even at varnum pondville from varnum pondville's yeah. cauldron he just got a, a new record he just put out and it, it is a badass record the vocals man his guitar playing is uh i don't know man there's there's too many people to thank on this motherfucker well where oh, can Philip they Weber. round hoolan from infernoise god forbid one of the best bands ever from <laughs> spain I, you know, there's just too many people to thank, but thanks yeah, for having so me Yeah, so you want to see it, uh, go buy this album. Yeah, where go buy people, the motherfucker. Where can they buy it at? Fucking, I don't know. At this Scum Scum <laughs> show coming up on the 15th? At this Scum Scum coming up on the 15th. Go to Apex Signs. Go to Apex Signs in Arlington, Texas. That's right. Yeah. Get you a sign and get you yeah. a CD. Yeah. And you can get the CD sign. Yeah. See? yeah. Whatever. Whatever right. it takes. Right. Look at your plan, man. Hey, thank you to anybody that was watching, man. God bless you. And thank you, so, Corey, for fucking doing that badass fucking footage, man. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. Thanks, thanks for having me. Oh. Fucking, uh, you want to play one thanks more scum scum, and then we'll come back and yeah. call it a night. Thank you, you guys for tuning in. Fittingly called Let It Go. Let It Go. And the kid's fucking right. 11. Just later, later. That. God bless you. Hey. 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 What's up, Terry Ryan? Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, up. Let It Go. And the kid's right. fucking 11. Later, later. I down. Never give up. This song is called Let It Go.
Couple minutes, so I just All wanted right. to reiterate. All right. Reiterate. Yeah. Scum Scunge on the 15th, just uh, 12 days away or whatever. And um, it's going to be your birthday party. We turn it into a birthday yes, party, sir. right? Happy How birthday. old are you going to be? Yes, sir. 56. Uh, 26. 26. <laughs> 30 year difference. Oh, no, 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 no. 26. He's going to be 16. My fault. 16. So, 56, huh? I'm as old as you want me to be. <laughs> Age is just a number. Came to the wrong place. <laughs> so yeah, go out there at the uh, Mavericks and uh, buy Stu a beer, bring him a cupcake or something. Buy bring a him a woman. Bring yeah. him a woman. Uh, a nasty you know, one. A concubine. <laughs> <laughs> so bring him so, she, bring so him he can put her to work on the farm. You know, yeah. have him I have him look for arrowhead. Hard work at the farm. You want to grab that arrowhead real quick? You gotta matter of fact, you know, I can just leave her out there and she can do all the work, so I don't have to go there all the time. Yeah. yeah. But it is deer season, so. Scum Scunch does have a Facebook page. They do have an Instagram. So they do have them albums. Out. And they do have albums, so... You can get at their show on the 15th. <sighs> and if you would, Stuart, me and Pam have had this age-old debate. She found this rock. Let me see. She says it's oh, an arrowhead, no. and I say it's not. So, so we're about to find out. Yeah, you tell me. That's a chip of flint. It's a chip of flint, Pam. I yeah, told it's you. a chip, chip of, flint. of flint. I mean, but it, 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 is, it is what the chip Indians flint. use. And that's what it's I It's got a them. fire bomb on one side right there. It's a fire pock. And... Yay! But it, it, it's actual. What are you cheering for? You were a, wrong. It's the actual it carved, right? it, No, I couldn't oh. tell you that. They might have knocked it off and they're making okay. something else or whatever. So it's not just it a natural rock. But it is old. What I mean, but it is. It's a piece of flint. This is what the Indians used to make their. Yeah, to make the. Sure. So it. So yeah, it it's, it's, at, least, at least you didn't show me a, like a trader's village. No. Uh, <laughs> 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 Perfectly you know, fucking solid. National uh, Park fucking right. jack off job or one side of the It's got a little pin with a back to it. So no, but no, that's a chunk of flint. Hold on. I picked, I picked that shit up. Shows at Trader Village. Fuck. Uh, uh, like yeah, Salinas. the Mexicans will eat it up like So uh, <laughs> next next week we'll have uh, Dank on the show, and they'll be doing a Tales from the Bar, which we've only done one other time with Whiskey Dick. If you guys remember to, uh, if you'd seen that show, uh, it was a year and a half ago or so. But live performance here from Dank. They got a new album out. It's going to be fucking badass. And, you know, we're going to do it upright. So tune in. Grab you a keg of beer. Tune in to the Dank Show next Sunday. And the 17th. The 17th is the uh, the Thanksgiving gross out. Oh, that's and right. Just just, just wait. We'll, we'll let you know more You're gonna about that. You going to come to the Thanksgiving gross out? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that after the, the show, dude. I'm you... at the fucking farm. Can dude. you eat a roach like a cockroach? Can you eat like a straight up cockroach and some spiders and some crickets? Because that's what some... we're going to be doing, man. Do you know how much fucking chicken shit I eat at the farm? I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> he I'll says do he's it. in. I'll he do says it. he's in. I'll do it. Okay, well, you right can come. On. Here's the thing is, if you if you can last all the way through it, the last thing is sister, I mean, if you can get through all that, you can come to the wing challenge later on. So, what's wing challenge? Just eat oh, wing challenge is the hot wings. Oh, yeah, I love hot wings. Okay. Yeah, cool. but the, with the feathers still on them, right? 
Be prepared, <laughs> be prepared for me to bring you out. That's going to be the 17th. Scorpions Double. and spiders and going to munch down. All kinds down. of disgusting. Wait. And it's Thanksgiving. Wait. you got to get Is the thanks. stinger still on the scorpion? It don't matter. You can eat it. It's like oh. eating a jalapeno. Oh, oh whatever. It's fine. You I'll can't anyway, so climb under my trailer. Be ready for that. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all of October. You guys are fucking amazing. God bless Stumps you. Guns. Thank you. Yes. Adios. The Thank 15th. You. Boom. Stumps Guns. Maverick Sports Bar.